Hi everyone, this tutorial is all about the input configuration dialog in Gravitas. If you haven't done so already, I recommend having a look at the main tutorial for Gravitas first to learn about its various functions before continuing on with this video. Now, in our session here, we have a drum loop and Gravitas is set to heavily compress it with its link parameter set to 0%. That way Gravitas behaves just like a typical multi-mono compressor. Clicking the button below the input meters opens up the input configuration dialog. This dialog is divided into two sections. The upper section is the detector input mixer. Here you can select and set the level of the input channels going into the level detection section of Gravitas. Currently Gravitas is located on a stereo channel, so we see only two faders here. By clicking the listen button, we can hear the actual signal that is going into the level detection section. Let's pull the right channel all the way down and switch off the listen button. We can hear now that the right channel is way less compressed. This is due to the fact that by lowering the volume going into the level detector, less of the signal is above the threshold where the compression is triggered, and therefore the right channel appears louder. Now let's set the fader for the right channel back to 0 dB, and compression is back to where it was before. Next, let's switch off the link button, which links both the upper section and the lower section. Let's also switch off the left channel in the detector input mixer. Sonically, not much has happened, but you might notice at the lower right corner of the plugin, the link and peak mode knobs have switched off. This happens because now we only have one channel going into the detector, and you can't link channels if there's only one channel. Okay, let's switch the left channel back on again, and instead, switch off the left channel at the input selector located at the bottom section. Now we hear that only the right channel is compressed because the left channel has been bypassed and its audio passes through Gravitas without being processed at all. Additionally, we can see in the lower right corner that the link knob now shows 100%. This is because the number of active channels at the level detector input is different from the number of channels to be processed. In this case, there's no meaningful way to perform unlinked processing. Peak mode, however, can still be adjusted because all channels in the detector are linked at 100%. Let's switch the left channel back on and also enable the MS switch to do some mid-side processing. As you can hopefully hear, the stereo image increases as soon as we switch on the MS processing. We can make this even more pronounced by increasing the S level. Next, let's switch off the left channel in the detector input section. As you can see and hear, MS automatically switches off because there is only one channel at the detector input and mid-side processing is not possible with only one channel. The same thing happens if one channel is taken out of the processing instead of the detection. Now there's one more thing you need to know when using Gravitas on a track with one or two LFE channels. Let's take a look at a 5.1 track here. As you can see, the LFE knob below the processing filter is active and you can adjust the output volume of the LFE channel. Let's open the input configuration dialog and take out the LFE from processing in the lower section. You'll notice that the LFE level knob becomes inactive when we do this. This is because the LFE channel is not being processed. Gravitas is a plugin that you can use in your DAW like any other plugin. However, in addition to being a plugin, our Dolby Atmos Composer users can also have Gravitas as a module inside the Composer 
for processing their Atmos mixes. To learn more about Gravitas as a module inside the Dolby Atmos Composer, please watch our tutorial on this topic. There's a link in the description. And that's it for this video. Please check out our other tutorials about Gravitas, and if you like this tutorial, please give us a thumbs up and check out our other tutorials about the Dolby Atmos Composer. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to not miss our latest news, tips, and updates. There's more to come, so I'll see you in the next one.